as well. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Let me go ahead and admit everyone that is waiting to come in. Good morning, everyone, this morning. So as we're going to go ahead and get started here, give everybody just a moment. Get admitted to the meeting. And then just a reminder, if everybody can please make sure you mute your microphones. Um, that would be very helpful. And just some quick housekeeping things, of course. Uh, if you look in the... Um, in your under participant or chat area, there should be an area that says raise hand. So as things do come up throughout the presentation, um, and we specifically ask for if there's any questions that come in, um, you can raise your hand. We'll try to call on you as, as we get going. Okay. All right, well, we are gonna go ahead and see. So, all right, hopefully everybody's settled in. We got a few more people joining us and we're gonna go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone to the April 25th uh, town hall. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Of course, it is being broadcast on Facebook Live. We'd like to definitely welcome some of our special guests. We've got um, Cindy Bolter with, uh, she's the Chief Nursing and Operations Officer from John Muir Health. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, as well as Joel Schostrom from, he's the CEO at, from the Food Bank of Contra Costa and Solano. So Joel, thank you for joining us um, today as well as talk about some of the programs that are going on with the food bank. And then of course, uh, we've got our friends from the Chamber of Commerce and from Visit Concord, and uh, a new guest that's gonna be joining us this morning, um, Dave Hughes, from, he is from the Concord Couch Series um, that we're gonna be telling you all about. He's got a new thing, what's that? The Concord Couch Concert, I'm sorry, Concord Couch Concert. Concord Couch Concert um, that he's going to be talking to us about today um, and some fun things that are going to be coming up over the course of the next few weeks. So thank you for joining us everyone this morning and um, let's go ahead and kind of go through some of, of course, the normal housekeeping things like we said. Uh, for those of you who are joining us via Zoom, if you want to, there is a way to raise your hand if you want to go ahead and do that. Um, that'll help us uh, see if you want to ask a question to any of the presenters at the end of their presentations. Uh, and then um, please, of course, mute yourself. Of course, you are this, your video is, is, is being streamed. And so uh, we can see you. Uh, so just a little heads up on that. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, go from there. So let's go ahead. I always like to get started with the stay home and stay safe, but the big thank yous to everyone around our community who have helped us manage all of this. Uh, but thank you to everyone who stayed home. Thank you to everyone who has stepped up to volunteer. Um, I can't stress that enough. There's been a lot of great volunteerism uh, here happening around the city of Concord. Thank you to those who've made donations, and we're going to talk more about that later on in our, uh, in our presentation today. So thank you, everyone, who is doing your part. And of course, you've probably seen some of these signs around town. Uh, again, just the kind of constant thank you. This was, um, this was efforts on behalf of the Concord Chamber. Visit Concord and the city putting these up. So thank you actually for Kevin uh, putting these up around a number of different locations in the city. So just kind of give everybody the quick current state. These are some things that are coming up that we want to make sure you're aware of. Um, of course, the stay at home order is in, in place until further notice, but you've seen there's definitely been um, some things around the community in terms of some of the different counties that are extending their orders. We're waiting to see what happens from Contra Costa County at this point. It hasn't been finalized in terms of if they're going to uh, raise the order or if they're going to extend the order at this point. I think most of us probably have an idea that um, the order is probably going to be set in some way, shape, or form, but I think there's definitely already been discussions around what the order is going to look like as we continue to um, add 
you know, businesses kind of slowly back into that mix. So that's definitely new updates and guidelines are going to be coming over the course of the next uh, next few days. I would imagine this next week. Um, we've got a lot of questions about this, so I want to throw this out there. Graduation plans for high school seniors are being finalized. So uh, kind of some fun um, some fun news there. I've been working with the Mount Dabba Unified School District, and we are coming up with a plan to uh, to make that still a reality out at the Concord Pavilion. So again, more news to come there, but something just to let everybody know that we are working on it. Um, I've been in talks and we'll have something, uh, you'll probably be seeing something over the course of the next, uh, next week or so on that. So exciting news. Uh, the next piece here is Concord Forward. The city of Concord is, is launching uh, a new, uh, kind of a new website. And, and of course it's definitely in collaboration with a lot of our business partners. And, uh, but it, we have a new program that's going to be coming out. It's called, it is the business relief, uh, business license relief program. So it's going to defer any of the renewal payments uh, with no late fees, penalties, and charges for a number of our um, programs, I mean, it's for our businesses. The way the program is going to work, uh, the details are on the website, conqueredfirst.com backslash conquered forward. But the idea is that, um, the idea though behind this is that uh, it's going to defer um, your your um, actual business licenses that um, over the course of the shelter in place and then they'll become due 90 days after the shelter in place is lifted is how it's supposed to work so wanted to just kind of give you some heads up on that and then finally we've got another item coming up on our city council agenda for april 28th and uh, that has to do with some of our new cannabis regulations so I wanted to just give you a quick heads up on, on what's coming up on the agenda for this next Tuesday. And so uh, many things at this point, of course, you know that there are, we, the city of Concord does allow for cannabis regulations at this time. Um, we do allow for manufacturing and distribution, but we allow for only two, op, two uh, operations or two business owners to, to have that space at this time. And we allow for two testing labs. And of course, delivery is allowed within the city of Concord. But the proposal, as, as we're looking at it here, this is just kind of a quick snapshot, that the, go, the, um, the overall idea is to increase the number of manufacturing uh, operations from two to five, uh, placing no limits on the number of testing laboratories, and then allowing for up to three non-storefront retailers, allowing for up to three storefront retailers. Both of those um, that we're looking at are going to be selected through a, a RFP process. You'll see that listed as request for proposal process that allows us to kind of figure that out in terms of um, some of the, the better players that could play in that space um, successfully. And we're looking to allow for up to two micro businesses. So I guess those are just the general proposals. Um, there will probably be, a, of course, a few tweaks that will come along uh, during the discussion at the city council meeting, but I just wanted to let you know that that is going to be on the agenda, of course, uh, this Tuesday starting at 6.30. So next up, we've got, uh, again, cover your face. I think everybody at this point in time knows that uh, that order is clearly in place here in the city of Concord and throughout Contra Costa County. Again, just a reminder of some of the do's and don'ts, but please take an opportunity when you're out in public to cover your face. And of course, it is it is for the uh, better of not just helping protect others, um, it, but it's also protecting yourself. So um, take a moment if you need to go out. It could be a simple bandana, some kind of face covering. Just please be considerate when you're out in public. All right, so um, other reminders that we continue to make sure that you're aware of is the Concord Connect mobile app. There's a lot of good information, not just, not just of course, ways to report things, but there's also other good information that exists within this um, that does give, of course, city updates, links to the city website, other resources that exist within the city of Concord. They all are, all, all are available on the city of Concord a Connect mobile Connect app. And of course, I mentioned it earlier, but of course, the city of Concord does have a COVID-19 um, resource page that links to a number of different areas, whether it be the end, you know, personally, as well as for business resources, a lot of things do exist right here. So you saw the news story yesterday a little bit uh, about what's going on with the governor's proposal. Of course, the city of Concord uh, kind of kind of started that a little sooner than uh, maybe what was being discussed at the state. 
but the Concord Cares program specifically is our own senior emergency food program and helping hands program specifically. Of course, we do run that through uh, Meals on Wheels is our is our biggest partner and the Mount Valve Unified School District. And of course, it is for people that are six feet under and that are homebound with food insecurities. Those are our only requirements at this point in time. Um, we know that uh, the governor's in the process of rolling out another another program that will also partner with some of the local local uh, businesses, local restaurants. So we're trying to get all the details around that at this point in time uh, to see what that program is going to entail and then also whether or not it impacts our current program that we have um, or if there are other ways that that can be rolled out to have a kind of a broader reach because a broader reach as as we've definitely kind of seen um, some good things as a result of this program, but also some learning that I'm hoping that the governor's orders can be modified as we've been uh, as we've been kind of seeing things happen uh, with this program over the last four weeks. So again, I just want to continue to make sure that everyone knows that this program is available to the city of Concord, uh, to any city of Concord residents that uh, need any kind of food or assistance. And then, of course, the next thing that uh, is coming up or that is happening as well is. Uh, under under the umbrella of the Concord Community Foundation, uh, the um, the Concord Community Foundation has gone ahead and stood up a uh, donation page because a lot of people have asked us uh, how to donate and help others in the community, especially around our unsheltered population. So the city of Concord, of course, has an unsheltered uh, program at this point in time. We are providing hotel sheltering uh, and room and board expenses for the most vulnerable uh, of our population at this at this point. Um, and so those who would like to can go on to ConcordCF.org. That will help us continue to extend these programs and make sure that we can even bring potentially more people into that program at this time. Um, we do have some limited resources around it, but we've been trying to do our best to, to try to stand that up. And then I know that um, Dave, Dave is on the call actually later and he's got something that is going to uh, to kind of help benefit. But again, just just bringing, um, bringing some, some highlighted uh, thing good to this program. Um, that we have available. So I'd like to go ahead and um, start off with Cindy Bolter. She's our first guest today. And uh, Cindy is going to be talking to us um, from John Muir, of course, behavioral health. There's a lot of things going on right now that we're definitely concerned around um, behavioral health, mental health, anxiety. And so I wanted Cindy to come on for a moment just to kind of tell us some of the things that are going on, maybe some resources that John Muir has that uh, that everyone can benefit from at this time so cindy let's see are you you know what you just let me unmute you or go ahead and unmute yourself cindy right thank there you there we go perfect okay well thank you thank you for the opportunity to be here today um you know we are i just want to start off by acknowledging we are in a unprecedented time for our nation uh, we have a novel virus that is unpredictable in its presentation and effects on people. Um, our human response to these events has created additional stress as people have been gathering and uh, at times hoarding products from the stores. Who would have ever thought we would run out of toilet paper or water or canned goods at times? And there's a lot of loss right now, loss in being able to connect with other people, uh, loss of school, loss of jobs, graduations, um, and even activities and travel. And then we have financial effects that are really creating some, some stress for people, along with mi mixed messages. We hear different things on the news each day about what we should and shouldn't do to protect ourselves. And so all these realities and concerns have created an opportunity for increased anxiety and really have tapped into most people's coping um, skills. And so I wanted to share some strategies today on some things that uh, might be helpful to people in managing that anxiety. Um, so you can uh, go to the next slide, that would be great. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to share with you 10 tips or strategies for uh, things that you can do to self-care and to help with that anxiety that you might be experiencing. Uh, the first is, you know, it seems like the news is on even more than normal. And when you turn the news on, most of the focus is on COVID. And it can be very seducing to watch. Um, and 
uh, it's, you know, talks about a lot of different things, but um, before you know it, you can be ending up watching the TV uh, for hours at a time. And oftentimes when you're watching the TV, it can leave you feeling scared or anxious or depressed or confused. Uh, oftentimes you leave with uncomfortable or unpleasurable feelings. So the first tip is to set a timer um, and figure out what, what is uh, your toleration in terms of the amount of news that you can watch before it starts making you feel uncomfortable or leaving you feel anxious and just stop. Um, if you're feeding your brain and saturating your brain with negative thoughts where it's focused on illness or death or the financial aspects, it's gonna be difficult not to be affected. Your brain needs balance and it needs a break and you need to disengage from that thinking about doom and gloom. So um, find out what's what that amount of time is for you. And when you start feeling anxious, just turn it off. Uh, there's gonna be nothing earth shattering that you're gonna miss that's uh, gonna have an impact on your life, but it will have potentially an impact on your brain. The second uh, tip is to keep a healthy perspective. So acknowledge and recognize that short-term and narrow perspectives might be your first reaction, because that's natural, but we can't get stuck there. You want to think about long term. COVID is a big deal now, but life is very likely going to return to normal in the future, and the crisis won't seem so big and overwhelming as time goes on. So think big picture. COVID's a big part of our lives now, but it's not life itself. There are likely many things in our lives that are good, and spending some time thinking about the good and what you're thankful for and appreciate can help reframe those depressed and anxious thoughts. You want to think long term, big picture, and that'll help you take your gaze off of the immediate crisis as you look around into the distance of your life in the future. The third is that any of us um, at any given time, we can get stuck in unhelpful or negative thinking. And sometimes we refer to that as stinking thinking. Um, and so we want to learn how to replace that thinking with a positive per perspective and be aware of some thinking patterns that we can fall into. One is catastrophizing. Instead of thinking, oh, we're never going to get through this, nothing's ever going to get back to normal again, try reframing that in your mind too. This is a challenging time, but we are going to get through it together. Things will change, and sometimes change creates improvement or opportunities for better things in the future. Be aware of all or nothing thinking. Instead of saying, we can't do anything now um, while we're in quarantine, try thinking, well, we don't get to do as much of what we used to do, but we can try some new things and we can try to make the most of it. And lastly, don't jump to conclusions. We can get in a thinking pattern of thinking, oh, we're never gonna find toilet paper again. And then what are we gonna do? Instead, put it in perspective. Well, we have enough toilet paper for now and the stores keep getting restocked. In the meantime, we, there are family and friends and neighbors that might be able to help out if we get in a place where we're almost out of toilet paper. The fourth um, suggestion is to change your focus. We have to kind of get in a place where we need to look at um, what are the circumstances that we can change and what are the circumstances that we just have to accept. Um, if we learn to focus on the things we can change or alter, it'll help us feel less depressed and less frustrated. Also, you might need to change your definition of what a good day is to meet the current reality of the situation. And then focus on achievable goals within our new circumstances of our life. Um, so that we can focus our problem-solving efforts on that. Next is to try to create and maintain some semblance of structure in our lives. Daily structure is really important. And for many families, that has been kind of blown out of the water with all the changes with people's jobs or working at home and you no know, school. So create a daily structure. Work, work with your kids, get their feedback on what that structure might look like. And uh, that can really create a sense of peace uh, in a, a world that may seem a little bit chaotic right now. 
use your extra time to try something new, learn a new skill or a do-it-yourself project. There's lots of YouTube videos out there um, for crafts or learning a new language or musical instrument. Um, it makes for a great time for families to uh, try new things together. And it also can help add structure to the day and help refocus on the future um, and future beyond uh, the coronavirus. Number seven is to take care of your body. So trying to eat healthy, it's easy to wanna to eat all day long, and, uh, but try to eat healthy, try to get exercise. You can do that within your home. There's YouTube videos that can, you can do together as a family to exercise or um, out in front of your house or um, in your neighborhood, as long as you're practicing that social distan distancing and masking. Um, sometimes it can be helpful to focus on a meditation or relaxation techniques. So at the end of the presentation, I included some applications that some of them are free that you can put on your phone to help you uh, relax if you're feeling really stressed. Try to avoid um, increasing your use of alcohol or other drugs. Uh, that can be a coping mechanism, but in the long run, it's generally not helpful. And can have a more negative impact on your relaxation and your sleep. And although there might be benefits to family spending time together, there's also potential to create increased tension or irritability. And a technique that can be used when you're finding yourself in that place is to just take a deep breath. Take a nice deep breath, relax those muscles as you're breathing out, focus on your breathing. Um, it can really make a difference in um, calming you down. Stay connected with others. Social distancing doesn't have to mean social isolation. So focus on creating opportunities to connect with friends, uh, either through applications, technology, or even while observing social distancing practices. Um, you can still talk with your neighbors, uh, you know, while wearing your mask and being six foot apart um, or I, I've heard of friends who get together and they'll share a meal together using a social application just so they can have that connectedness time. Reach out to help others. So I saw that, you know, you were thanking the community for their volunteer efforts. When we, um, something interesting happens when you focus on giving to others or serving others, it has a really healing effect on uh, whatever internal feelings we might be having, anxiety or a bad mood or being depressed. Um, so offer to make a meal for someone. Send a note of encouragement to a friend or family member. Call a senior in your neighborhood and ask how you might help them. Maybe you can bring them a meal or do some grocery shopping for them. Um, or find out what's available in the community to volunteer for. It will give you a fresh perspective and help with that anxiety that you might be feeling. And then lastly, try journaling or starting a blog. This is one of the most significant periods of time in, in our history, in most people's experience. And writing them down, recording your story, not only will it be something that can be healing, but also you'll have a record of what it was like for you that your family members in the future will be able to look back on and read about 50 years from now, 100 years from now. So uh, on the next slide, I included some resources, um, those phone apps that you can uh, possibly look at um, that might help you with meditation or deep relaxation techniques. Also, there are some very helpful websites. Uh, if you go to the CDC website, they have some uh, tabs that are specific to COVID and managing stress and anxiety. Mental Health America has a lot of webinars and applications there, good information about managing stress, anxiety related to COVID. And our suicide prevention resource centers um, also have a lot of very helpful information. And then I wanted to let you know about some hotlines and other services that are available. So if you find yourself in a place um, where you might be feeling like you're getting in a crisis situation, there are several free hotlines that are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, our own Contra Costa Crisis Center. There's a national hotline, the Disaster Distress Helpline, and Optum, which is an insurance company, offers a free emotional support helpline 
for those who are struggling with COVID emotions, anxiety, depression. Uh, within the John Muir Health System, we have behavioral health services, uh, not only at our inpatient hospitalization center, but we also have an outpatient center in Concord that provides day treatment services uh, for people who are feeling like they're in crisis and uh, those services are available to people in the community. And we have both teen and adult resources for both mental health and addiction medicine. So I wanna thank you for having me here and uh, I'm certainly open to any questions that might be coming in. Sure. Thank, thank you so much, Cindy. We really appreciate you coming in and, and, and just chatting with us today. I think it's safe to say that, you know, uh, with everybody being, uh, dealing with the shelter in place, being, being in place for the last month or, or so or more, um, it's something that kind of wears on you a little bit. And so I think these are some really good reminders about things that people can do and just being, being mindful of, of not just taking care of the things around them, but taking care of themselves. Uh, I think that's something that definitely people lose sight of. So um, definitely some great tips that you shared with us today. I, I really, uh, I'm really glad that you were able to join us. Um, I'll go ahead and, and open it up. Are, are there any um, questions for Cindy really quickly? We have time for maybe one or two questions. Um, any on there? Okay. All right. Um, okay. Well, it looks like... Um, there is one question. Um, sorry, this is Valerie, city manager. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. There's one question for Cindy. Um, and he, the question is, is Cindy Bolter fam familiar with isochronic tones and by gnarl beats, they can be interestingly soothing. I'm not specifically familiar with that, uh, so I really can't speak to that. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing it's something that you would uh, tap into an application, uh, but I don't know. Maybe meditation related. Yes. Okay. And everybody else is saying thank you for being here on the chat. All right. Thank you. Glad to be there. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Cindy. We really appreciate your time coming on. I have a question for Cindy. Sure, Wayne. Go ahead. I was wondering if the uh, John Muir Behavioral Health has any outreach to the uh, unsheltered community during the COVID crisis or any suggestions for outreach. I am not familiar with uh, what John Muir is doing. I know that we, with our community benefit program, we are connected with a lot of community resources and that they have been reaching out to the community resources that we are already connected with to see how we might support them during this time. But I, I'm not up to date on any specific um, outreaches to the homeless uh, sheltered community. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, thank you again. Um, we appreciate you coming on the call today. And again, go ahead and, and take note of some of the different resources and hotlines and services that are being shared. And um, thank you very much. So next up, uh, we have Joel. Joel is the CEO of the Contra Costa and Solano Food Bank, and he's here today to share with a number of the different resources. And I asked Joel to come on just because I've been working with Joel um, as, as there's a number of different groups and nonprofits and just different places around Concord where um, the food bank is going to be supporting bringing food to. Um, so I wanted to talk to more about kind of the ecosystem and everything that goes into the food bank so that everybody gets a better idea of what's going on and how, how they need help and how you can help them. So. All right, Joel. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on behalf of the food bank, just really appreciate the opportunity to speak with everyone today. C can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Well, we all know that this pandemic has been incredibly disruptive to essentially everyone's lives and created a lot of hardships. And we at the food bank have experienced a significant increase of people coming to our distribution sites uh, looking for food. Uh, many of them for the very first time. They've never faced food insecurity before. We have many of our sites has uh, overall been seeing 30 to 50% increases in food distributions. 
And we saw that accelerate even in this last week. And we've had some sites that are actually at 180, 200% increase with many new faces, people who've never faced food insecurity before. So um, it's very concerning out there and we're making a, a very um, uh, thoughtful and significant approach to getting more food out to the community. And I appreciate being able to speak about it today. If you could move to the next slide. Uh, the mayor asked me to just give a little bit of an overview of what the food bank is and does, because um, many people on the call may not know, but um, we've been operating since 1975. Uh, I just joined in December uh, following the well-deserved retirement of Larry Sly, who had been uh, 43 years of dedicated service to the food bank and the community. So very proud to be there and, and share in this moment as we really respond to this crisis. We have over 80 staff members. We have uh, over 1,000 volunteers per month. So I'll talk about that more a little bit later, but we are so dependent and thankful for our volunteers. We have two warehouses, one in Concord and one in Fairfield, over 70,000 square feet total. Um, that number is growing as through this crisis, we've um, been searching for and found additional space for storage. Uh, the mayor has been extremely helpful in uh, trying to use some vacant retail space to put uh, allow additional storage for us. We have a full truck and vehicle fleet. Um, and we partner with over 230 nonprofit agencies. Um, these relationships have been built over decades long before I arrived, but some wonderful partners uh, in emergency food pantries, soup kitchens, churches, residential programs. Um, and it is th those are, are maybe 40% of our total distributions, and then we have our own direct distributions. Uh, we are proud members of Feeding America. We are the affiliate for these two counties. And that really means that we bring all of the Feeding America resources and share those with all of our agencies um, across both counties. So we can move to the next slide. Uh, when I joined in December, I was thrilled to learn a few of the statistics, if you will, of over 25 million pounds of food distributed last year. We're actually on trend to be about 30 million pounds before this pandemic. So that number is really rising quickly. And I was very pleased to see that nearly 60% of our food distributed is fresh produce. And I think that's really good because that is, it's more nourishing, generally speaking, it is uh, more attractive and, and I think to our clients as well. It also takes a lot of volunteer work. It's a lot of handling to sort through um, produce and then to, to bag into portions to give out. So again, very reliant on uh, our volunteer group. Many people may not know that for you know, people in need, one in every eight residents in Contra Costa and Solano rely on the food bank for emergency and supplemental food. We serve over 180,000 clients every month in our two, in our two uh, counties. And um, kind of sad to say, you know, 25% of those are children. So there's a big need out there and the food bank I'm proud, uh, again, long before I showed up has, has been a huge contributor and a large scale food provider for our communities. If you go to the next slide, Mr. Mayor. As far as the programs and operations, we actually operate seven days a week, which is a little unusual for some of the food banks. I'm proud of that. Um, again, 100,000 volunteer hours. I just actually looked that up. It was 104,000 uh, volunteer hours last year, which is the equivalent of some 54 full-time employees. So if you think about, we have 80 you know, paid employees and 54 you know, comparable um, that's 40% of our workforce is our volunteers. So we really appreciate that help. And our volunteer, the community has stepped up um, through this pandemic and really helped us fill essentially every volunteer uh, shift that we put on our website seems to get filled up and we would appreciate that. We are reducing food waste by partnering with retailers like Safeway, Whole Foods, Raley's, Walgreens, et cetera. And then we're very strong in leading the fight to end hunger through legislative advocacy. And some of that is through um, everything from the ABOD piece that was recently legislation, uh, literally this last week and allowing CalFresh um, recipients to use their cards um, with Amazon for delivery so that they could not be into the public. So a lot of good things there. We have a staff that works in, in helping to enroll and let people know about SNAP and CalFresh eligibility. It's interesting that 25, 30% of the, that our teams approach the, of um, eligible families don't even know that they're eligible for assistance. And so we help educate and we help enroll. 
Um, I think I would also just add on here is our, maybe the biggest change, you can go back to that, that last one one more time. Um, just back in operations again, I think one of the biggest changes in our operations with this pandemic is that with this massive increase is that we've uh, created emergency food boxes and emergency produce bags. And that's part of what the, the uh, mayor is helping us find room to store some of these as we create these. But um, the, the food box is shelf stable products. It's about a 25 pound box with about 20 different items in it. And um, it's, it really is um, um, uh, sh shelf stable again and, and a, a supplemental to our existing operations. We were fortunate to get the National Guard to help us um, actually assemble these boxes. And you may have seen us on the news a few times, or at least the National Guard and other food banks. They're at our Fairfield location, and they're assembling over a thousand boxes a day for us, and then spending another three hours, five days a week, sorting produce and bagging emergency produce bags. And we presently have distributed more, this last week, over 4,000 of those boxes and 4,000 of those bags in our communities. So that's one, been one of the key pieces for us to uh, increase our volume, increase our scale and doing it efficiently. And I uh, appreciate everyone's help with that. Um, you can go to the, the last slide. You know, so we really are asking for everyone's help too, because we, we honestly just need more food to get out into the community. And so there was a slowing in the supply chain after um, previously mentioned all of those runs on the grocery stores and stuff. So we've got a lot of trucks pending coming in. And uh, with that, the bulk of that will be for creating these emergency food boxes um, and the, the emergency produce bags that we'll continue to distribute. Um, we've created some um, great partnerships, like I think the, the uh, mayor mentioned the Catholic churches in Concord, where we have uh, distribution sites here with at least four of them where we're doing 250 to 400 boxes per site um, along with the produce bags, and that's been a huge help. Um, we've worked for years with the uh, Monument Crisis Center and a great organization, great partnership, and we every week have our community produce program, which is actually a, an old beverage truck that's been converted into a portable um, farmer's market, if you will. And we've changed it around a little bit how we're doing that and adding these supplemental boxes um, to those. And, and Monument has been an example where we've been able to do that in, in quite scale. Last week, we had um, our largest distribution, which was at the Las Madonnas College. And um, that was over 700 boxes and 700 bags serving some 1,300 plus families. And so that is part of the efforts that we're making um, to rise to this occasion and the rise to this significant increase in need. Um, I do ask for your help. If you've volunteered before at the, at the food bank, um, I thank you for that service. If you're comfortable and healthy and able to do that again, I encourage you to sign up. Um, there's uh, shifts opening up all the time and it's available on our website. Um, we do need funds to buy more food. We do take the donated food right now, but our primary need is cash to buy really volumes of food um, so that we can continue to rise, you know, meet the needs of uh, this, this, this growing need in our community. As I mentioned at the outset, with these types of increases and seeing new people who've never faced food insecurity before. Uh, we've been worried about our seniors and uh, for, for some time, but they often are budget stretched and, and have a hard time getting to sites. Um, and now they're actually afraid to get out as a vulnerable you know, um, a group to come out to our sites. We've been concerned about our children and their families with the schools closed. And we've partnered with seven different school districts to increase the amount of food that we're providing, including these emergency boxes and bags. And then I think we're really worried right now, or I'm at least really worried right now, I'm sure many are, of the unemployment rates that are out there. You know, over when, last week, we were an hour of 26 million unemployment applications. The government announced 20% um, unemployment this last week. The Great Recession was 25. I mean, we're just about there. I'm not sure where that number is going to go, but it, to me, it could get to 30%. And that's going to force many, many people who live right on the edge, paycheck to paycheck, and um, it's gonna push them to the edge of food insecurity. So we need your help. I encourage you to visit our website and, and um, either donate or look for time or just get educated on how you could maybe tell a neighbor how we could help them. So Mr. Mayor, I appreciate that time. And do you have any questions or others?
Well, Joel, thank you so much. Um, and, and I think he, he had an opportunity to kind of share a lot of the good resources that are going into our community. I think that's the biggest thing is trying to allow everybody to understand what the ecosystem is around the food bank too. Uh, you, you actually touched on even a, a number of the next few slides um, and I put up there about the emergency food resources like we've been partnering with, with a number of the Catholic churches just to have, again, sites to be able to distribute these products, um, Monument Crisis, and a few of our other uh, partners as well in the community. So thank you for kind of uh, connecting those dots a little bit. But like you mentioned too, you know, uh, we are in the process of partnering with the food bank and a number of four different agencies, of course, Monument Crisis, White Pony Express, St. Vincent de Paul, to make sure that you've got the, the food storage that you need in order to make sure that, that we, can, we can work through some of these uh, challenges we're gonna have over the course of the next few months. So, um, so it's been a good partnership. And, and again, like I said, I wanted Joel to come on and kind of give that and, and thank you for, uh, for giving, give us a quick update. So you were mentioning though, the food bank CCS.org is a place everyone can go if they'd like to donate specifically. Um, and I think you shared with me that, that you've got uh, a pretty significant amount of food coming this way over the course of the next few weeks. Um, but that's all something that needs to, we need help in funding. Is that correct? That's correct. And, and the next wave too, because this, you know, this isn't going to end in two or three weeks. Um, we know that this is going to go on. I think it, it's easy to say 90 days or through the summer, who's got the crystal ball to tell us, but with these unemployment ranks adding to the already significant need, um, we're filling that pipeline with a lot of food and we're doing some of it on faith, knowing that our community is going to continue to rise, um, you know, to help us raise the funds to, to make sure we keep that pipeline full. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, let's go ahead and see if there are a few questions that anybody may have. Um, Valerie, did, are you seeing any that are? No, I'm moment? seeing mostly uh, thank you for the work you're doing within our community. Comments about the need for the food bank and how many people may lose their jobs through this crisis. Um, and then a comment that we should be encouraging people to grow food in their yards and donate any excess. Those are, but it's all comments. And, and actually, I, I will I will give some credit to uh, Councilmember Bersan on that. Um, I believe he has actually helped, and I believe it's the Concord Rotary does the gleaning project, and they bring a, a number of, uh, they actually bring fresh produce over and, and fruit and vegetables over to the food bank on a pretty regular basis. Um, and so do you want to just touch on that really quickly? Because, of, of, you know, that is something that is possible, correct, Joel? Oh, yeah. It's, it's actually really fun when um, people bring, you know, three, four bags of oranges from their backyard, lemons from their backyard, other produce. Um, it, it is, it's, it's some handling involved with it, but it's wonderful to have the community giving back to us with that. Um, on the, I was going to make one, the Rotary Club of, of uh, Concord um, recently uh, has started a second chance for cars fundraiser. So watch for that also. It's going to come out probably next week. Um, they were extremely successful in raising money for the, the fire disasters, um, and they volunteered to uh, raise money for the food bank. So if you have an old car in your driveway or garage or uh, your neighbor has one, you might encourage them to donate it for this cause. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then I have another question that did come in, though. It's from Susan. Um, there's been a question about farmers dumping milk um, or farmers not harvesting their crops. Uh, what does that mean for you guys? And is that something where you're able to kind of help deal with that? What, what, because I mean, I, I, we've seen some news stories around that. Um, do you guys ever serve milk products? Uh, is that something that have you tried to actively involve as, as kind of a network of, of people trying to procure food? What does that look like for you? Yeah, there's a couple things here. It's actually been really quite helpful for us. I feel really badly for a lot of the farmers that actually have crops dying in the fields because there's not the demand for them anymore with restaurants closed and conventions and hotels all canceled or closed. Um, there's been a surplus of produce. Very fortunate that um, as a part of Feeding America, we belong to the um, California Association of Food Banks, more acronyms for people, CAFB, um, but it's 41 of the major food banks um, in uh, California that really kind of co-op purchase for uh, this produce. We get great prices on produce. Well, we not only get great prices, but right now there's a, a, an overabundance of this produce. So yeah, part of how we're meeting this 
you know, big increase in need is through getting a lot of this produce. Um, without naming too many names, but, um, you know, Whole Foods and Rayleigh's have, have also donated quite a bit of produce as they've been overstocked on some of that of late as well. So that's been a huge benefit to us. On the um, other side of it, a lot of these canned goods and canned proteins like that we put in our, in our supplemental boxes, these tins of tuna or tins of chicken, um, those have been very hard to come by, you know, through our, our regular channels just because of the run on the grocery stores. So that's what's taking a little time in queue right now, or we can go to secondary sources, but then we find ourselves spending more money for it. So we want to get back to our regular sources. The supply chain is going to come back. Um, as Cindy said, we will get toilet paper back into the, into the retail stores, um, but it has been a little bit slow at this point. Great. Thanks so much. Um, anyone else have any other questions they, they have for Joel at this time? I have two questions for Joel. All right, go ahead, Wayne. Uh, number one question from reading your slides and your comments. First of all, I want to thank you for the food bank. It's amazing. Um, is it better for me to hand you a dollar or to go buy a dollar's worth of food and get the food to you? Well, it is. It really is the dollar donations right now because we need the food in scale and there's less um, handling of it. As much as we love the donations, then it takes volunteers and staff to sort through and then bag versus where we can buy it in bulk. Um, that is uh, uh, more efficient for us at this time and at this volume. Do you get a wholesale discount on the food? What's that? Do you get a wholesale discount where you would be paying less for it than we would, so it's better for you to buy it than for us to buy it? That's a really good point, Wayne, is that we get, fa we get fabulous prices pretty much across the board. As I mentioned on produce, it's like really almost unbelievable what great prices we get on the produce. Um, but it's also true when we buy in bulk on tins of tuna or pasta sauce or whatever else it might be. So that's a good point. I was wondering that my second question is about your uh, mobile food trucks are mainly stocked with carrots and onions and potatoes and oranges. Is there any way to stock them with uh, make it more of a mobile food pantry and then maybe include recipes for whatever you have on the truck that day. It's really hard to make meals out of pantry food and food bank food. Well, I think that's a good point, Wayne, is that we do try and mix up the variety as best we can. And I think what's now happening is we're bringing these supplemental um, food boxes of the um, shelf stable project products. For example, I know that this week's menu not only has, you know, cans of tuna and chicken, but it's also got pasta, pasta sauce. And those are great opportunities for people then to make a full meal using that fresh produce. So it's a combination of those two things. We do have recipes on our website, but you make a good point. We have not put recipes um, very often. Um, we're not putting those in our emergency boxes, so that might be an opportunity for us. Would it be possible to put a few emergency boxes on the trucks? We, well, we are. Not at all locations. But so, for example, at the Monument um, Crisis Center, we have had, it's a separate truck, and then we're adding these supplemental boxes to that. Mm -hmm. So people get produce and the uh, shelf stable food emergency. And also some to remember, I'll jump in here, is that um, you'll see even this next week, there's a number of sites where people can come up to, walk up to with those boxes. So we're trying to make it, they're, they're going to actually be readily available throughout a number of distribution locations too. So you don't, you, and, and you don't necessarily even have to have a car. People can walk up and put it back, put it, you know, break it down, put it in their backpack. And that's happened too. Um, there's no restrictions in that. So, all right. Well, um, for the sake of time, thank you so much, Joel. Um, good questions, Wayne. I, I appreciate that. Um, we're going to go ahead and kind of wrap up and go. We have a few more uh, things that we wanted to go through today. So, um, Joel mentioned uh, that, of course, in within the city of Concord, every two weeks at the four Catholic churches, we are doing uh, food distribution for the boxes that Joel was talking about. So there are roughly 250 boxes per location. It starts on Tuesday uh, and then goes Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It starts at St. Bonaventure Church. 
at eight o'clock in the morning. Those boxes go out. There's roughly 250 boxes. They also have a food pantry as well. And uh, in terms of breaking it down, actually, they do a very good job because if it's if maybe it's not a full family, it needs a full box, and it's just an individual. Uh, they actually do break down uh, into smaller portion sizes for people as well at St. Bonaventure's. Uh, St. Agnes is also going to be on Wednesday along with Queen of All Saints. And then finally Thursday on the 30th, uh, St. Francis of Assisi. They end, up, they end up having usually a few more than 250 boxes, uh, but that is, that is also all available this, this coming week. Uh, the uh, constant reminder, emergency food resources are definitely available at the Monument Crisis Center, located right there on Market Street. Their two days for distribution are on Monday and Tuesday of this next week, the 27th and 28th. And then uh, Park Haven Community Church, their resources are available on Tuesday from 4 to 6. So um, there's definitely a lot of things happening on Tuesday throughout the entire day if, uh, if you are in search of resources. The other, uh, the other final reminder is, of course, with the different school, the grab-and-go lunches continue to be available at this point in time. We've got, of course, Cambridge uh, Elementary, Meadow Homes, El Dorado Middle, Mount Dabla High School, and Ignatia Valley High School. Uh, and then, of course, Clayton Valley High School um, has them Monday through Friday, of course, roughly 10 to, 10 to noon um, each day. So those will continue to be available. Uh, in terms of other things, you've, you've of course heard this last week, the Concord Farmers Market has reopened and overall was, was relatively successful. There's definitely a lot of new orders that are in place in terms of spacing and, and how you're supposed to handle produce as well. So please take a moment to uh, take a look at those. But, uh, and again, just please everyone be patient, be smart when you're out at the market. The goal is to, to make, again, fresh produce readily available to, to everyone. But again, there's definitely some, some new uh, guidelines as that, as that pertains to the event. And then a few other things, of course, Concord Eats. Uh, on the other side, of course, continuing to make sure you remind everybody, hey, we've got some great restaurants out there. Continue to support our Concord restaurants with the hashtag Concord Eats. The list of available uh, eats and treats restaurants are available on the Visit Concord website. That gets updated as soon as they get it. So it could be even daily in terms of the different restaurants that are available, whether they've got takeout, curbside delivery, and their contact information. And finally, um, Concord Live, these are the things that are being stood up by the Concord Park and Rec and our community and economic development folks. And so, of course, on Thursday, April 30th, we have a home sip and paint class that will be put on. Uh, this is sponsored by the Concord Art Association. And so this is going to be a lot of fun in terms of uh, a little glass of wine and some paint. If you check out uh, the event on Facebook, it'll give you a list of the different materials that you would need in order to follow along at home. So next up, I've got uh, Dave Hughes, and he is going to give us some, uh, some information about the Concord Couch Series, a new series that's going to be starting up. So Dave, if you don't mind telling us, uh, Concord Couch Series. Concord Couch Concerts. It does. Gracious. I keep it does require that some practice. Yes. My goodness. Yeah, All right. Well, Dave, go ahead and tell us what uh, what you've been coming up with. This sounds exciting. Yeah. Well, this actually all started with uh, uh, talking with some local musicians, trying to figure out how we can, could uh, continue things like open mic. Um, and as you can imagine, you know, all gigs have been canceled. You got working musicians that are completely out of work. So at first, it was just a way to kind of just keep that. That thing going. What what was the smart way to do it uh, virtually? Because um, it was it's kind of a wild west right now, where everyone's starting a new Facebook group. People go live different times a day. The audiences are all broken up. Uh, and Concord has such an incredible music community here that we can just really we want to celebrate it. So that's what we're going for here. So next slide. Yeah, I'm gonna. I threw this together this morning, so bear that's, with us. No, that's okay. Actually, let me just kind of click through it. You got it. It looks like it gave you the. So who, as you can see here, I'll do my there. best not to uh, just read what you're looking at here, but just kind of elaborate on the points. It's uh, it's 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 musicians. It's us. You know, independent recording artists, songwriters, performers, open mics. It's folks that contribute to the local music scene, whether they were uh, born and raised here, or uh, they're folks that moved here, like myself. Um, or you know, live in Oakland that are always playing here. Um, but this this first one we're going to do is going to be very Concord centric. 
Um, what is it? It's a bi-weekly Friday night virtual concert series. When? The first one is this coming Friday. Things are moving really quickly. Where? It's all over the place, all over Concord. Uh, it's, sometimes it's going to be, you know, literally uh, a man or woman on a couch playing an acoustic guitar. Another time it's going to be a more elaborate production. Uh, how is this happening? Uh, it's going to be streamed on the Facebook page for Concord Couch Concerts, so please join it now. It just launched last night. Last time I looked, we had like, I don't know, like 150 or so. It's, it's gaining some steam, but we could use your, your guys' help pushing it. Why are we doing this? Uh, as I said, it's, uh, Concord has great music history and great music culture, and it's still active today, but uh, it needs to be showcased. Uh, that's the perspective of most of us. And musicians, like so many other people, are hurting right now, and it's 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 time, you know, it, it's been overdue to celebrate our local music in a in, in a new way from the independent artist perspective. Um, this is one way to do that. Shelter in place affords us um, a unique opportunity to expand the audience. By that, it's just you know, it's kind of hard to say why don't you come out to such and such bar at 10 p.m. on a Saturday night, you know, if you're home with your family or whatever. But, uh, you know, 8 p.m. or so, while you're already at home, probably online anyway, um, it's, it's just, it's a good, it's, we, we found that to be optimal. Next slide, please. So, yeah, the first one's going to be quite an extravaganza. It's uh, 12 performances across two hours. Each performance will feature one popular song. We've asked all the artists to play at least one song most people know. And the selections have been pretty cool so far. Uh, most will feature one or two original pieces. We really want to showcase the original Concord music here. Uh, there's two VJs. Um, for those of you that uh, already don't remember MTV, that's Video Jockey. Uh, <laughs> two VJs trading off co-hosting. Uh, the content is PG. Um, we're you know we're hoping uh, that we can keep it that way for a while. But you know these are artists. But the first uh, few that we're going to do are going to we're insisting upon that PG aspects just so you don't have to worry if your kid walks in or whatever the case. Um, apologies, my connection's getting a little weak. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we're okay. I mean, it's glitching a little bit, but it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Our 5-1 event, that's the one this Friday, is actually doubling, as Tim mentioned, as a fundraiser for ConcordCF.org. Uh, the musicians, you know, thought about it because in one hand, you know, Kind of looking for the, some tip jar money there but on the other hand it's this is an emergency and uh, our most vulnerable folks in our community need all the help they can get and musicians are more than happy to help so uh, we're really excited to make this the launch of our series um, something that partners with uh, this great cause who specifically is doing this it's, uh, it's a whole lot of people, but it's mostly driven by uh, myself, a musician of 20 years, a uh, recording artist, and work with uh, some grassroots community organizing. Uh, there's Vince. Yeah, he's on, actually on the call, if you can wave. Um, hey, Vince. Hey, Vince. Vince is a music teacher. Um, he's a creative force behind the local band Sabertooth Unicorn, and he used to host open mics uh, over at Red Hat for a number of years. Uh, Joey Nunez, he's a uh, current open mic host uh, for Vinny's Bar and Grill. Uh, several active bands he's in. Uh, the most notorious in our region is the, the group Swoon. Really incredible act with huge following. Tom Davis, uh, also from another incredible act, Radio Keys. Uh, he's al also has experience organizing and promoting uh, festivals, specifically Mountain Vibes Music Festival. That's largely his doing. Performers for this first event, um, I actually updated this earlier, but that's all right. We'll just work with this. Uh, so entire bands, we have uh, Radio Keys. They, their production, they figured out a way. Basically, half the band lives in, in uh, Concord uh, as housemates. The other half lives in Oakland as housemates, and they figured out a way to come together virtually. And, it, and it's actually, it's really cool to look at, and the music sounds incredible. You're, you guys are going to really dig that. Uh, the Breed Loves, you might remember them from various performances around town over the years. Uh, they're performing with their beautiful little setup in their backyard. And there's artists from uh, tons of other bands that, you know, unfortunately can't get together. And, and that kind of sucks for, for artists when you can't just get together and play music communally. But um, we are having, you know, one or two people 
from uh, groups listed here. You know, you got Stung, the police cover band people are familiar with. Our friend Brooks will be performing. That's uh, it, Vince from uh, Sabertooth Unicorn. Um, uh, the Unoriginals, we have three different members from the Unoriginals doing their own sets. Um, and uh, Mel Barron's from Pain and Wind will be performing. It's a, a duo that plays up in Martinez often, kind of a folk duo. Um, there's, there's other bands listed here, but uh, that aren't listed here uh, that are represented as well as a bunch of, uh, of solo artists. So. Who's paying for it? That's always the big question, right? This is actually a labor of love. Uh, all work uh, by the organizers, the performers, production team, it's all volunteer. Uh, we're hoping that you know, people will be generous, both for the cause that we're getting behind and hopefully with uh, the tip jars that we will be featuring um, on screen. You know, there'll be uh, PayPal or Venmo links, uh, artist name, like kind of overlay, uh, artist websites. If you guys are unfamiliar with what Bandcamp.com is, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, most independent artists sell their music through Bandcamp, and there's a sizable um, royalty taken, but they've done this once already since Shelter in Place, and they're doing it again conveniently on 5.1, uh, where they're actually taking no royalties. So if you get some album sales that day, you get the artist gets the full take, which is, um, this is just coincidence. It just works out really well. So we'll be promoting a little bit of that um, as well. There's also going to be a couple small like P uh, PSAs from um, some, uh, you know, just pushing the cause. We really want the, the cause to be up there just as much as the celebration of music to be in front of this whole thing. Join the Facebook group. Please invite your friends, invite your network, share what you see on there. Um, we're going to start trickling out with more promotion stuff over the next few days. Um, when we go live this Friday, share the stream. Now, I don't know if you guys have uh, noticed this or not, but Facebook is doing something uh, a little interesting right now where they're really pushing these watch parties, which has its advantages, but it also has uh, some disadvantages when you're trying to do something like this. And one of the things we're trying to do here is build a large audience. Watch parties break that audience up into smaller, like it's you and your friends, you know, anyone that wants to watch that's in your contacts, where an actual um, share brings that audience into the original. So uh, we will provide instructions on how to do that as we learn more about this process. But it seems that Facebook is in a transition stage um, and it now takes more effort to just do a standard stream than uh, initiate a watch party. So uh, there might be an extra click you have to do, but uh, we'll, we'll get that figured out and we'll communicate that to anyone that wants to help us. And how can you help us? You tell me, there's my email. Um, contact me, um, I'll put you in touch. If I can't uh, work with you and find time to, I'll put you in touch with others that can. And uh, we are looking for help. We want this to be a huge success. There's gonna be a follow-up one that is not gonna be a fundraiser um, on the 15th. And we're hoping to do it the first and third Friday um, going at least through shelter in place and we, we anticipate success. So we think it will grow into something a little bit bigger and um, I'm really, really excited and so happy to be working with the people that I've been working on with this, including some of our friends over at Visit Concord. All right. Well, thanks Dave for uh, giving us a, a heads up on that. Um, I, I know that when we talked, I'm actually really excited to hear about uh, you, you having a chance to put this together, highlighting a lot of our local artists, um, I definitely a big shout out to a number of our local artists. We've had an opportunity to work with them over the years. So this will be a lot of fun. So thank you for uh, taking the time, energy, and effort, and, and the love that you have for, for, uh, for the music to, uh, to make sure that this is going to happen. So. I have a quick question for Dave, very quick. Sure, Wayne. What is ConcordCF.org? That's a great question. Uh, you want to take it, Tim? It's Concord Communities Foundation, but uh, I think Tim can elaborate to better points. Yeah, but th that's exactly it. CF.org, that is um, the website specifically. That is the portal where you can make the donations um, that end up actually funding the different um, homeless and food programs that the city has set up at this time. Okay. All right. Well, hey, thank you, Dave. And uh, we'll definitely push some more information out over the course of this next week. And so look for information around uh, what that final look um, lineup looks like for the Concord Couch concerts. Hey, um, and uh, thanks for sharing that with us today. Thank you for sharing. All right. So, hey, next up, we've got the Concord Chamber of Commerce 
And uh, Kevin is here. He's the CEO of the Conquer Chamber and got a few Thank things you, to share with us. Thanks. Um, thanks for getting all of that going. And also, you know, it's great to see the information coming from John Muir and the, the great work that the Contra Costa Food Bank's doing. They're excellent partners for the chamber. So it's wonderful to see that. Um, if I could go to the next slide, please. Um, virtual storefronts. This is something that just kind of came up last week and we're, we're doing our best to build this. Um, you know, so if you have information that you would like to share with us, um, we would like to, you know, get it on this virtual storefront. I mean, everybody's talking about this pivot term. Um, and this is kind of what came out of that. Um, our folks at Red Dog Graphics and Conquer gave us this idea and we're just gonna kind of run with it. So if you, you know, have your current business and you're looking for to do something differently, um, you can post your link on this virtual storefront. The object is maybe you can, you know, dip your toe back in the water of your business and, you know, you're not actually gonna go to a store, but, if you have product or something that you could sell and you want to, you know, provide a need out there, this is a place to post that information. Um, and we're going to do what we can to encourage people to um, go to this and use this, um, enabling people to maybe look at their business a little bit different um, and how they can stay relevant and top of mind uh, and work with their customers. Um, so if you have any suggestions or if you want to add your name to this list, we would really appreciate that. Um, we're finding, you know, the chamber is only four people um, and we're finding that, you know, we need our, our, our members and conquered businesses to really share information with us and we're doing our best and it doesn't always work out, but we're definitely doing our best to communicate this information, give solid information and also uh, try to update it as often as we can so it's fresh and um, relevant. So virtual storefronts, pretty neat. Last slide. Um, and, it, and it gets me to this thank you. So many businesses and different organizations in our community um, are working together to make a big difference. Uh, it's been very humbling to be in my position and work with the people I do to, to hear how people are sharing their information, best practices, they're giving away some secrets, um, they're teaching you grandma's recipes, you know, these things are all so important. It, it makes our community strong. Um, and we're hopeful that as we move forward into the next phase of this situation, that um, that community will help us, you know, gather Concordians together quickly and support businesses and communities and each other and move back that back half of the V no one seems to be talking about anymore, but it, we want to be there to make a difference to help that happen in our community. So thank you. Thank you, Tim. All right. Well, hey, thank you, Kevin. We, we appreciate your support. Um, and, and like we well, mentioned earlier on the call, of course, working with our economic development department and the chamber and visit Concord collectively, everybody's working, trying to work as close as we can uh, to support our small business owners here in the community. So next up, uh, we have Elaine from Visit Concord to share some of the fun things that are uh, kind of going on and some fun things to share with you about that you can be doing, of course, while sheltering in place. Uh, well, Elaine? Thanks, everybody, and good morning. Um, these were some great presentations this morning. Um, so thank you, um, Cindy, and Joel, and uh, Dave. But, you know, just kind of, again, um, we are sheltered in place, so no one is visiting Concord right now, but that doesn't mean we can't do it virtually. And so there's so many great businesses and organizations that are really working on this and, and making it go. Um, so again, here's a photo of one of our staff with our uh, virtual tour. Um, and then we have just kind of some, so fine, <laughs> next slide. Um, but that's the Concord Historical Society map that has a, a walking tour of all the locations in, in Concord. So that's something uh, you can do. Um, also, again, as we've talked about today a lot, just getting out there, that mind and body stretching it. Uh, there's all kinds of great yoga courses, um, stretching courses. So, you know, really uh, a lot of the, most of the organizations of gyms as, as well as smaller places have really uh, taken that opportunity to do some free um, classes and it's just really helpful. And I, I didn't think I was a 
yoga person. I do a lot of exercise, but I don't do yoga. But I've now started as a great way. Just I started with the five minute, and now I'm up to the ten minute. Um, and so that's kind of fun uh, just to do these type of things. Also, online um, Concord bookstores, we can all help support them. Half Price Books has a great website that has some online opportunities as well as our uh, Barnes and Noble newer location that's in, in Veranda, but they're doing their online store. And again, of course, on Visit Concord site, we have Color Me Concord for the kids. We have, uh, and more, we have uh, coloring pages and the Park and Rec also has some great programs with that. Why? Um, I did again want to thank Dave for his, his presentation and again talk about Concord Music. There is lots going on with Concord Music. We've uh, revitalized as uh, our Concord 50th anniversary of the Concord Jazz Festival. So I have a great committee that's willing and ready to take a look and um, see what we can do. And they, uh, rather than how we had originally planned, we will probably do a lot of virtual events, but um, the spirit of Concord is really with us. So again, uh, the Concord Couch Concerts will be the co-host on that and we'll be uh, supporting Dave in any way we can for that. Uh, Concord Jazz playlists are available on our website. Um, San Francisco Jazz has an amazing fun concerts and one of the people that's on our committee um, works for San Francisco Jazz and she also helps with Mount Diablo School District uh, Music Foundation. So she's really in touch and these are $5 concerts that are just amazing. The Veranda has a free concert tonight. Um, so check that out. And Blue Devils has something called BD360. You can find all of their great um, performances online, as well as our music market series has just about every concert around. Um, so if you want to get that feel of, of what it's like, again, you can certainly um, go to YouTube and find those concerts, as well as the City of Concord website. Next slide. And then again, just things to do this weekend around your house. We've got backyard fun. If you don't have a pool, which, you know, that's a, quite a luxury, just go for that hose and slide and sprinklers and have fun with the balls. And, you know, just, just get out there, uh, right there in your own neighborhood, um, you know, safely and protected. Um, decorate your bike back in the old day where people put little clothes pins and cards and all kinds of silly things all over their bike. Uh, encourage that. Um, walking through, uh, you know, Markham Nature Park and Arboretum, if that's near you, you can absolutely do a virtual tour on that. And, um, and then if it's near you, um, take a look around at the flowers that you can take a look at. Next slide. And again, these banners are coming out this weekend and will be finished on Monday where we're doing, uh, we'll put up the final banner at the Clarion where they are having a blood drive on Monday. Um, and there's still signups available for that. Uh, but again, this is just a great opportunity that we've worked. And these, these ones were actually hosted by the Pacific Service Credit Union, which is, uh, they are an essential worker also, as well as our hotels that are all nine hotels are open and they're, they're serving, um, the, the city and county programs, as well as essential workers in there uh, right now. And if you have time again, um, write a letter to a loved one, thank an essential worker, put a little, you know, card out for your mail person, um, you know, find someone and just, you know, just share that, that importance right, is really important right now to, to make us all feel um, worthy and uh, keep going, keep positive. Next slide. And again, we will be opening the Concord Visitor Center when the time is right. We'll have all kinds of music information and other things that are happening around, uh, working according to the phases of what is available. Next slide. And then again, uh, here's a really pretty view of the Waterfall Trail, uh, Mount Diablo. But again, take care of yourself. Be safe. We miss you. And again, hashtag Concord Love. So. Thank you again, and we and I really appreciate all the work and the community support that everybody's out there. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you, Elaine. Thank you to Visit Concord. Thank you for um, helping kind of stand up a number of different efforts that are going on around the community, uh, including uh, working with the Concord uh, Couch Concert.
So uh, that's a that's a great uh, interaction there. We're glad that you're able to to make that work and, and help them out with that. So again, thank you for that. Um, we appreciate you sharing those different resources. We know that of course everybody wants to jump and, and get outside, uh, especially with the heat. But uh, again, you know if you can, just try to hang back and still continue to uh, play it safe right now. So uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and give the last little shout out to, of course, the Eye of Dabble, the Beacon Lighting, happens every Sunday. So just a, just a kind of a nice reminder to think about to see that uh, that goes on um, tomorrow night. So at this time, we'll go ahead and if there's any other last minute questions that may have come up, um, I know that there's a few, other, a few of our partners are still on the call and to see if there were any other questions via the chat or anything else, Valerie, that you may have seen come in? Um, no, I haven't seen too much more come in. There ha was a question on where somebody can find past versions of the town hall and you can find them either on the city's YouTube page or you can find them on the city's website. If you go to the mayor's web page, they're listed under there by date. Yep, that is correct. And then, of course, they're also um, on the actual on on my Facebook page. The um, you can see all of our all of our past town halls on on the Facebook page as well. So, uh, Tim, I got some uh, George Fulmore. Sure, George. What's going on? Uh, one, uh, just to uh, make sure. Uh, about outdoor events, so veranda, even uh, downtown Todos Santos concerts. I assume those are on hold. Yes, that's correct. Okay. The other thing is uh, health insurance. You know, a lot of people uh, may uh, have lost their insurance, or um, they they can adjust their insurance mid-year through Covered California if they, if they're on that. So maybe in the future uh, there could be some more information about that. Um, people can get uh, really good uh, subsidies to uh, comprehensive health insurance through Covered California. Okay. Actually, a yeah, good suggestion because I know you used to work, you helped be a part of that initiative earlier on, right? When that rolled out? Yes. Uh huh. And okay. it's gotten better uh, all the time. And uh, it's surprising what the, uh, what the uh, subsidies are for people, uh, especially because you, uh, you give an estimated um, income for 2020. Got it. So Got it. Based on last year, it's what you estimate you're going to make this year. And so that can really make a difference. Okay. No, thank you, you for, thank you for bringing that up. That's a good idea. Pending conflicts between renters and, uh, Landlords, um, there's a potential for a lot of landlords to be out a lot of rent and uh, a lot of uh, potential evictions, a lot of just uh, nasty conflicts. We have, what, 500 landlords in Concord, and uh, there's a variety of uh, issues that can come up uh, through all that. So I hope City Concord will stay involved with that. Perhaps uh, we could have more discussions about it. Yep. Well, we're, we're doing our best to stay as actively involved as we can and try to handle those things as they come in, um, you know, whoever reach out, reaches out to any of the city council members, um, all five of us are more than happy to help triage that as best as possible. And I'll put my contact information up here. But again, you know, we're more than happy to help make sure that people are getting the resources they need or getting pointed in the right direction to, uh, to make sure that we can help kind of take care of some of those gaps. So, all right, well, um, any other last minute uh, questions? I have two questions, so that's okay. Sure, go ahead, Nat. Okay, uh, so question one is, can the site of uh, Town Center 2 be opened up as just a little open space, just to give people a little bit more room to walk around and kind of get some fresh air, get some sun? So that would be no, unfortunately, because the site would have to be graded and it's actually not that safe of a place right now. Okay. Uh, second question is, so at the skate park, there is a porta potty mm -hmm. and it's locked up inside the fence. Could it be placed on outside the fence so it's available for people to use in the case of an emergency or for homeless people, uh, just so it's available, because it just seems kind of like there's this 
there's this resource. It's a single stall. It's easy yeah. to clean. So let me uh, actually. So it's it's a good it's a good point. Um, the are actually our only problem at the moment is trying to get the hand washing station to go with it. Okay. And so luckily, um, this next week on Monday, I believe I know we're putting out a number of other porta potties as well, and we've been able to pair them up with hand washing stations but that's actually kind of been our biggest uh, hold off at this point is being able to get uh, the hand washing stations so to your point though it's actually a good idea um, we would just have to see if we can actually get a uh, hand washing station um, to pair up with it so that's that's the only that's the only hold uh, that would be the only thing at this time and may or may I add to that that so we have four Bathrooms with hand porta potties with hand washing stations already placed in some key locations throughout the city, and we're getting six more delivered on Monday. That um, the, in these the additional six have the hand washing station inside the porta potty, where the others have them as two separate facilities. So we will have ten total in the city spread throughout, trying to put them in locations that are most supportive of some of our unsheltered population. Yeah. If uh, I think there was a question, the, the locations are Willow Pass Park, Ellis Lake Park, Ignatia Valley Park, Newhall Park, Concord Community Park, um, and the Monument uh, Corridor Trail underpass between Franquette and Market Street are the. I can uh, suggest that Toto Santos uh, really needs one. Well, and again, that was that was the first group that we had at this time. Um, but I, that's not to say that we can't continue to, again, as, if we can get them, we will continue to try to put, put more out if we can. Okay. All right. Um, I had one more question. Uh, Laura, you had a question? Um, no, it's not a question. I just want to, um, give a shout out to the Concord, um, foundation, the community foundation. Um, CCA is really, um, proud to support the efforts that uh, the foundation is doing to raise money to uh, protect the vulnerable and, and shelter them and feed them. And so we're really happy to be helping however we can. Well, and, and thank you for, for pointing that out. And also thank you for actually making a donation and, You're welcome. and being a part <laughs> of, of helping make that happen. So we appreciate that partnership as well. So thank you. And Mayor, I want to point out one additional thing. Some of the folks are asking, where are the porta potties? And the city started a COVID-19 newsletter that we're issuing every Tuesday. Um, it, the first one we've issued, unique as just this, um, was this last Tuesday. And every Tuesday there will be one. You can view it from the website. We sent it to everybody on our email list. We posted it on Nextdoor. You can go on our website and sign up for it and have it sent to you directly. Um, so if you want to um, stay informed on some of the city's response to COVID-19. It's a great resource. All right. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. But for, so for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and get wrapped up. But um, again, you've got my contact information. Any other questions after this, please don't hesitate to reach out. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. There's a problem with the uh, website as far as finding the link to this town hall. Uh, on which, uh, Wayne, go ahead and contact me afterwards. Let's talk about that and figure, we'll get that I also out. wanted to thank you for uh, heading off the uh, homeless encampment bulldozings the other day. You did a great job and I really appreciate it. Well, I'm, I'm glad we were able to, to get something figured out there. Okay, all right, thank you everyone.